upright. We're live and my camera's working and I'm so excited <laughs> because at the end of my last stream, my camera, my overhead camera decided that the HDMI port was no longer a thing that it liked to have working. So uh, after some tooling around and taping wires in place so they don't even nudge a little bit, we're good. Ultimately, it's probably going to have to be repaired at some point here, but the more time I can get out of it, the better. So, yeah, you know, you get by with what you can, you do what you can, and that's how it goes. So, hello, welcome to my stream. Um, I am working on this lady. There's been two sessions where it's just been watercolor and nothing but watercolor so far. So the plan today is I have a little bit more to do with the watercolor, but then I'm going to start working on some of the other media elements of this. So we'll get into some acrylic paints and, you know, anything and everything. The, the whole world is our oyster. So anything. Just follow where it takes, where the whole, I don't know, yes, the thing. <laughs> so I hope everybody has their coffee, tea, water, whatever you need to get through an evening. And we can get started here. Paints, and I would start, just uh, get some water on them real quick here. I haven't even sipped my tea yet. I just made it, it's probably crazy hot. And I will probably regret it when I do. Oh, look, cat hairs. Unavoidable, those. So I don't know where in the world anybody is, but it is very cold here. We have wind chill warnings and we have had them for the last couple of days and I think through tomorrow where it's going to be like it's negative 20 uh, teens to 20 for wind chills. So super cold and I think tomorrow's same. And then, oh my gosh, after that, we're going to get up into the teens for highs and that'll be a heat wave for a couple days while it lasts. And then, you know, back to the cold again. And ah, uh, it's fine. Live in the Midwest. It gets really cold every year. You just know that. It is what it is. Also, I was refilling my paint pans the other day. And I just grabbed my little baggie with little tubes of paints to see what I had and what I will probably need to get at some point. But I found this, see the super bright color right here, this pink? All right, it doesn't look as bright pink as it does in person, but it's super bright pink and I'm very excited that I found that. Uh, Mary Beth, hello, hello, how are you today? Hope you're doing good. Um, I've got my chats going on both. I'm dual streaming on both YouTube and Twitch. So if anybody's wondering uh, when I talk to other people that you don't see, that's what's going on. But I'm happy for anybody to pop in and ask questions and let me know what you're working on. I hope you're doing well, Mary Beth, and staying warm. I know you're near me um, where it is very cold. So yeah, hot tea. That's the That's the way to go, I think. Okay, <clears throat> that was very hot. <clears throat> it's all good. We're good. Everything's fine. <laughs> the Rowan Dark. Hello, hello. Ah, thank you for the follow. How are you tonight? I hope, hope where you are, you are staying warm. This is winter time. Very cold and unpleasant in the world, but it's okay. I've actually come to enjoy the winter much more than I ever used to. I used to hate being cold very much now i'm hot all of the time so i've come to appreciate <laughs> colder days a little bit um and the fact that i don't i'm working from home uh so i don't have to get out on the roads when it's like um put your life at risk just to go to a day job kind of situation uh even though you know you did that for a really long time and it seems kind of crazy yes indeed very cold i'm cold how are you <laughs> <laughs> I'm not too bad. As you can see, I'm not even wearing a sweater because I'm a crazy person. Um, it's probably around 69, 70 degrees in the house, which is my good spot. 
And of course, when I'm in my studio and filming, I got lights on and they get warm. So surviving and not being too uncomfortable. Just, yeah, glad I don't have to be out in it. Because that is where everything's just gross these days. We had a bunch of snow over the weekend. Was it the weekend? It was Friday, I guess. And that's never fun, but it's very pretty when you don't have to be out and trying to drive in it. I can, I've can i actually started to appreciate. Um, I used to always hate winters, but now, now it's kind of switched. I'm kind of anti-summer now. I mean, I like summer, but God, I'm always hot. I'm always sweating and it's gross and I don't like that. But anyway, too much information, I'm sure. And what the heck, let's use some of this crazy pink. I, I'm just excited. I love this. Wow, that's pretty great. I think I got this color from the waste shed. Uh, where I live, we got iced over. Oh, that stinks. Um, well, hopefully you can be very safe and not have to get on the roads and deal with that. We Over uh, on Friday, we'd gotten a bunch of snow. Um, my mom lives about 35, 40 miles away from me, so I guess I'm a little closer to the lake. I'm near... Uh, near Chicago, um, and she had a, ended up as with much more snow than we did simply because it, like, at some point it got warm enough that it was becoming this sleety, wet stuff that would just kind of melt itself on the ground, but it's still enough. I think we got like six, seven inches, and it was icy underneath it, which is never fun, but... Give the ice scrapers in the car a test out, make sure they're still working. <laughs> hey, I kind of like that. I don't know how much of the pink I'll actually see in the end. A lot of the these things will probably get covered over with more layers of other things. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to grab a... The other side effect is that it's very dry with all the heat on, and that makes me cough. <clears throat> I'm gonna um, just use a box. Sorry. And uh, just prop that up a little bit so it's at a wee bit of an angle. And because the camera's at a little bit of an angle, I think it might actually seem a little, even a little straighter than when you see it. I hope. Okay, let me look at my picture. My reference photo I've got on my screen next to me, so just taking a look. Okay. Yeah, we're getting there, but a little bit more. A little bit more to do. Evil Drawing, hello! <laughs> we are back. Watercolor, here we go. Absolutely. Um, the Rome Dark, I love your heart. Well, thank you, which is amazing because I just am wrecking it. I It was blue. But it was fading and my roots were long, so I bleached it and there's like things going on and yeah. Oh, we're getting there. We're getting there. I got one more process to do to it, but I just didn't have the energy to do it before the stream today. But yeah, I'm getting there. But I did cut it. I kind of had a mullet going on for a minute there. So the mullet's gone. Just trimmed it all up. It's just a pain because I don't like to go to I don't go to salons really I just do it myself because I'm a crazy person and it's always a little risky when you're doing that a little dangerous right uh no biggie though you know what a little pink in that one too Doing your own hair can lead to some very interesting outcomes. Sometimes great, sometimes unusual. And then you just gotta kinda deal with the consequences of your actions, <laughs> so to speak.
but that's how it goes. Unfortunately or fortunately, I tend to treat my hair like an extension of my canvas. Just gotta have it, gotta do something with it. Might as well have some fun. What size are we working on today? This looks big. This is fairly big. This is a uh, 14 by 20 and it's kind of an odd size. So I could uh, trim a couple inches off of the bottom of this. It's quite, it goes a little bit below. So you can see how long it is because it's not a standard size that you would get a frame easily for probably, but 14 by 18 more likely to, to be able to do that if somebody were to want to put a frame on this. But yeah, it's a little bigger. I'm trying to push myself to work a little larger than I used to for a while. Um, I kind of seem was going back and forth between extremes, like big canvases and then small pieces and just especially with watercolor it takes a very different thought process to be used to working um a little larger you gotta be willing to i think let go of a little bit more control and that's still something that i'm i'm working on yeah, 14 by 18, I could, if I cut off the bottom two inches, if I take that into consideration when I do the rest of this piece, then it can be a uh, 14 by 18 makes more sense. This is really odd size, but this is a watercolor block that I have. Um, I've mostly found that uh, watercolor paper is a little uh, cheaper to buy that way often um, in blocks, but and then you don't have to deal with uh, taping it down. And I can also pick this up and move it and it's fine. Um, I don't have to have it taped down on my desk and then I can't work on anything else there. Cause when I haven't been streaming over the last couple of weeks, I've actually moved this to the side and I have a little tabletop easel that I was working on some things over here as well as my easel behind me. It's just been this uh, process of going back and forth, but it, that's a, one of the another added benefit of having something on a block. I'm losing the edge of the finger a little bit, but I'll just have to crank up some of the dark there. That's kind of a weird thing with watercolor is trying to build darks, and then everything that you have around that you have to kind of compensate for as you build one area and another and then it's not it, you know that's uh that's just part of the the fun of working with watercolor the challenge maybe especially when you're trying to not completely overwork something which when you're doing this kind of thing is definitely easier said than done a little bit I am very guilty of doing that plenty of times. Try not to destroy my paper while I'm working on it. My rag is very far away from me. Alright, so I'll put some of these edges. Oh, just... oh my lord, I'm gonna break things. Okay. <laughs> if anyone could see my desk right now, um, Everything is so precariously set up. My lights and things are just like leaning against each other and cables are draped, kind of holding them up too. It's, oh, it's terrible. It's so embarrassing. I should be terrified that this is how it looks, <laughs> but eh, it is what it is. Um, how many sheets are on this? Uh, 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 20, there were 20 which never seems like there's enough sheets of watercolor paper in a pad when you get it, but. And I think I bought this pad because at one point somebody had hired me uh, to do a fort. Oh, what was it? There was some size. It might've been a 14 by 18. No, it wasn't that. Oh, I don't remember. Somebody asked me to do a bigger size than what I'd had, so I bought this one because I knew I could trim it down to that size, and then I just have the bigger paper to work with. But it, yeah, it's a strange, kind of a strange dimension. Oh, 
but it works okay. Because I can always trim it, take whatever size I want out of it, but we'll see. I haven't even completely worked out exactly what's going here in this like framed area. I have ideas, I have some kind of concepts. I know the overall um, direction I want it to go in terms of theme. Although I don't have all of the, all of these specifics worked out yet, but chewing on it, it's turning in my head at all times. We're getting there. We'll get there. control those ed edges. Hmm. Looks a little too green. Shadow. Uh oh, here comes my cat. That means trouble. Hi, Watson. Hey, 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 no, 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 no. Please don't lock on the paper. It's wet and there's paint on it. Uh, do I make prints of my work? I, I have, I have some things. I've done, <laughs> he's rubbing against the camera, like knock it down anyway. Um, I have, I not, I, about a year ago, I did a bunch of limited edition G clays, but I haven't uh, done a lot of pushing of them. I have some more illustrative type things that I've done for sale in an Etsy shop. Um, as far as like my fine artwork, I should get some more made probably. I have just a, a handful, I think like six of my paintings available that way. But yeah, um, the plan is to make more. It's just, uh, it's expensive to get prints made up front. It's like that upfront expense and then actually marketing them to try to sell them. They're terrible at that. Uh, and having storage, good storage room for all the things. There's all those random elements. But yeah. I should do some more. <laughs> it's like a maybe a goal for this year is to get some more prints made a little bit at a time. The things that I do on my Etsy shop that I mentioned are kind of more illustration-y. They're uh they, those are more of a print-on-demand kind of situation, where I found a really good producer of them, where I know that they're going to come out really nice on really nice paper. The colors look great. Um, but when I do, when I have been doing my fine art stuff, I'm doing like limited runs of it. So that ends up being kind of a different thought process um, and decision making there. So it's a higher quality piece. Do printers that do like museum quality prints and I do them small so they're not crazy expensive but um yeah it's sort of like I've been treating it like the demand's gonna um kind of dictate what I do or don't do as far as prints and things like that go and I'm sure that if I were Better at getting myself out there, maybe there would be a better, better call for it. But it's really hard. Like it's, it feels like it's always time consuming, and you never know what to post or say. So I just, I just paint. I just, <laughs> I just do live streams and I paint pictures. Is that? 
that doesn't take any like having to be a marketing genius. So I'm just painting. This is what I do. This is what I like to do. And I hope other people will find it interesting. And, you know, just hoping to find cool people out in the world. Other creative weirdos and... Yeah. Basically. <laughs> yeah, I got real, real flat here still, so I need to... I think I watched a couple of movies this week. One of them was good. <laughs> One of them was pretty good. Um, one was one of uh, the director James Wan's early films. So if you know, like, um, the Conjuring movies, Saw, the first Saw, I hate Saw movies, but the first Saw movie, the Conjuring movies, the Insidious movies, Annabelle, first Annabelle, like all that kind of stuff. Uh, Malignant, my personal favorite. <laughs> um, it's one of his early films. I think like he did some small stuff and then it was Saw and then this one and then on to his other things. But it was called Dead Silence. And it is a horror movie about ventriloquist dolls. And on the surface, that sounds kind of great, right? Um, premise was okay. Uh, it had randomly, who is, this was 2007, I guess. And who was in it? people I didn't really know and Donnie Wahlberg was in it he had a he was not a lead he was like a secondary actor that there's a spoiler alert for an old movie he dies in the movie and it's really bad <laughs> like how can you take a premise like ventriloquist dolls and make that a terrible movie who would have thought but yeah it was very terrible um And, I mean, if I really want to get nitpicky, there was problems with motivation and the logic of the evil. Um, the production design was interesting because there were some scenes and establishing shots and stuff that looked like almost as if it was um, a Tim Burton-esque atmosphere surrealistic almost like not quite real a little bit over the top um set kind of a thing and then there's others where it's just very much just a real space so it's like oh, what are we going for but anyway it was interesting i guess um the other one was a film called i see you and that was actually pretty good i liked that it was uh it's like a thriller and it does this thing where it tells you the story. There's this family and their point of view. The, fa the dad's a detective. There's these things going on. Um, maybe you think that there's something messed up going on in the house for a bit. And 
there was also somebody abducting children and this had happened years ago. There's this whole setup for all this stuff. So you go through the story once and then it kind of starts again. And you go through the story again, but through these other characters that you didn't even know were a part of the story the first time through, through their point of view. And that was actually pretty cool, the way that that was done. And even, even how they did the twist in that part, that second part, where you think you understand what's happening and you're making these assumptions about one character and then that's completely turned on its head and suddenly you realize your assumptions were completely off and some and it i don't know i liked it i liked that kind of uh just that it was a little bit a different way to do storytelling and it was um it was interesting i mean there's been other movies like that right uh which ones? I know I, I can think of Run Lola Run, and I know I've seen a couple others that did something similar, but it's not super frequently used, but pretty neat. Oh, that's almost cool enough to drink. Okay. My hand is still needs a few more layers to like match up with the depth that's going on in the face. The face is getting pretty close to being done. I'm nearly happy with that, with it. Nearly. So one of the really nice things I think about this kind of crazy weather, where it's like, don't go outside, it's kind of dangerous if you do. Um, it's just good weather to be inside and kind of get lost in working on projects or reading that kind of thing which is always which is nice to have to feel like it's a time to do that today is a holiday right um I still did do some work of course but just having a little break in the normal everyday stuff and of course you know happy martin luther king day it's uh that's a significant day to honor i did do a portrait of of martin, of martin luther king a couple years ago it was uh part of my 100 days of inspirational people series And he was kind of an obvious uh, take for that one. But then during that series, I learned so much about other significant people that were part of the civil rights movement. And Martin Luther King and Malcolm X weren't even the only ones that got assassinated in the US. I don't know how many people know that. That's. I think they made a movie about Baird Rustin. I'm not confusing my names. Am I? I might be. I hate my brain sometimes. Um, I think there's a movie documentary. It might be on Netflix, and I haven't seen it yet, but I want to. Actually, Martin Luther King's wife was a major um, inspiration too for civil rights movement. It wasn't just him, although he was obviously significantly important. What are we doing here? Getting getting close. Maybe. Whoa. 
That was maybe a little darker than I expected. Okay. It's all fine. Fine. Didn't break anything. Yet. I'm just going back and forth between looking at my uh, reference and what I'm doing, trying to see where I am with my tones and values. I'm getting there. I'm getting close. And what I want to change or correct. needs more shadow sure especially over on this side as well is the hairs casting a bit of shadow and then over here can be a little darker Perfect, but I think once I start adding in, um, like really working the hair, the details into the hair, that will help pull it together and see where and if I need to make further adjustments. as I continue to do things. <laughs> but I have, uh, I've pretty much finished a couple paintings over the last few days. I had some portraits that I was working on for someone and I'm happy with how those turned out. So now it's like paint the edges of the canvas and varnish them and that kind of uh, less exciting stuff, but important. I think we're pretty close then for now. All right, progress is being made. Can you believe it? I'm not, I mean, you can tell this area is very underworked, but I'm not worried about it. That's um, not a very important part. It's just, it's probably gonna get covered mostly with uh, other things and elements, but we'll just can put some base, base color down there and let it kind of come out into shadow a bit, at least a little bit. And there you can see I've used a lot of water so it's starting to pool a bit because I have the paper on a little bit of an incline so 
pull that up a little bit, maybe. It probably looks kind of weird, but it'll work. Trust the process. It'll work. I think this week though actually outside of working on stuff on stream i might not be doing that much painting uh i have all these other things to get oh cut off so <laughs> words i have so many things to get caught up on i'm behind on a blog post i'm behind on making videos so i think this week i'll finally have the opportunity to kind of catch up on those things which sometimes means other things might not be happening, but it's always a matter of balancing stuff out. There's this interesting thing going on here where I used, uh, I've been using little spots of pearlescent paint here and there. And the lips is one area where I used quite a decent amount of it, and it's, uh, it seems to be almost impervious to building up a lot of darks on top of it. Which is really very interesting. And then I stick my hand in the wet paint because this is what I do. All right, for real now? For real. For now, we're going to move on to some other areas. And I'm actually just going to put this to the side in a moment. Okay. I have a few things of collage materials. I got colored pencils. So the paints are right behind me. So it's just sort of making a decision of what I want to work on next. And I'm going to let what I did here dry before I do, because I think I'd like to work on the hair and I'm going to do that in acrylic paint. So I'm going to kind of let everything dry for the moment with all of that and start working into the area here. 
because all of this is still damp. And you can see where it's wet in some areas and other places. It's kind of more of a paper's cool and a little buckled. So here's some great irony. I'm going to use scissors to cut out scissors. <laughs> if you were here for my stream where I was uh, recently, like three ago, last week one day, going through old magazines, I think I actually cut this out then. I think I did. But I just did a quick, you know, pull it out and then it's ready for whenever I actually want to use it, I can get into the nitty gritty of it. So here we go. Clean it up a little bit. And that's going to come in here. That's going to be an element in there. Um, and I was kind of holding off. I was thinking if I wanted to have it be one of the first things that comes down on here because it could get a significant amount of coverage over it and I don't know if I want like how prominent I want this to be yet but we're gonna go ahead and get it ready to go and like this is oh, this is the nerve-wracking part where I have to start making some decisions And quite a few of these decisions are things that can't be um, reversed once I do them, at least in the sense that once I put something on watercolor paper, you can never really remove it again. You can't, I can't go in and remove any of that. And that's fine. I was very confident, very comfortable with doing the portrait part of this. It's all the other things, the things that I kind of treat as a little bit more um, intuitive process that can make me a little bit nervous but at the same time even though i can't remove things you know what i can always do paint over it <laughs> maybe not with watercolor paint but i can cover it up with a million other things so all is never lost and if you approach things with that kind of attitude, whatever you're doing, and you don't have any kind of find ways to remove the fear element of trying things, that's usually where you can come into something decent, at least some of the time, if not all the time. I mean, things can still get pretty crazy and weird when you're just experimenting and screwing around, but it can get pretty amazing if you let it. And if it doesn't work out, who cares? Because it's just experimenting and trying things. And as much as I, you know, don't like to waste things. Art supplies are expensive, y'all. Um, so I don't, I wouldn't want to be in a position where it's like, this doesn't work out and I can't save it and I got to throw it away. That would make me sad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but also I have more sheets of paper on here I have plenty more things to do and I've, no nobody everything that they do turns out perfect and great and amazing come on why can I not get an edge on this darn it here we go Even the greatest, what people who were considered greatest artists, made plenty of stuff that they threw away. So keep that in mind when you are working on anything and you feel like it's not going your way and you start doubting yourself. It is part of the creative process and it's our brains doing it to us and making us feel that way and they have no business doing that to us. They can be jerks. They think they're protecting us, but they're being jerks. Failure is scary, but you know what? This is not the failure that's going to make or break your, your life. Try the things. Go for it. 
try doing things different, try shaking up your process. As much as I love what I do, I also know that it's not exactly saving lives. <laughs> if it doesn't work out, nobody's gonna die, you know what I mean? It's fine. Try things. I really need to change my garbage in here. It's so full. Ah. It's one of those things. I only think about it when I'm putting a thing in it and I'm like, oh my God, I need to change it. It's so full. And then the second later, I forget that it even exists. And it is annoying. How fun is it to watch people cut things out? This is the only thing I'm actually going to cut out here, so don't worry. Do not worry. I'm almost done. Well, I started watching um, show Dark. For years, people have been telling me I need to see that show. Start watching it. So I finally started it. I think I got in two episodes. Because anytime I sit down to watch TV, it's always like late. <laughs> it's late and never can put more than maybe an hour or two and I also like probably do what you're not really supposed to do you know you eat in front of TV during when you're having dinner and that sort of thing just eh. okay so this is going to be here someplace you know let's start with just some texture some textured elements maybe first okay said I was done cutting things out but I'm just gonna take off this white border on this old photo. What is it? It's feet and legs from an old photograph that I used for other things, but probably put that down here. Let me get my glue. Oh. Everything's this benefit to having a really small space. Everything is within arm's reach. What do I want? I want a little palette. Oh, here we go. Cute little dish. That'll work. I've come to very much hate having... Yeah, I get my hands into the paint always. I'm covered in paint 24-7 when I'm in my studio, but I kind of have come to hate having this adhesive on my hands. Because it's always my first instinct to just use my hands for like putting glue, doing anything like that. But oh, I just sort of hate it. Okay, there we go. All right, that will get us started. I need a crappy brush, cheapo crappy brush. It's not in great shape, and here we go. And since I'm not planning on putting watercolor paint in this area, I can kind of, oh, there's something. Um, I don't have to worry much about the glue affecting the porosity of the paper, because anywhere the glue goes, watercolor paint will no longer get to the paper, go into the paper. So I think... When it comes to mixed mixing mediums, 
the only thing that the most important thing i guess to keep in mind is the order of things as you put them down and how it may or may not matter like if i'm working on canvas and i want to combine things with oil paint oil the oil paint might be one of the last things to go on the canvas because many things cannot go over oil paint right so i couldn't I can't paint with oils and then go in and add uh, acrylics on top of it. They'll ultimately end up not adhering properly and peeling off, most likely. Uh, this is wanting to pull up in the corners. It's fine. It's fine. Just hold it in place for a second. Um, and then vice versa with watercolor paper. With watercolors, if you're working with watercolors and you want to do mixed media, you're probably going to want to put your watercolor first. Watercolors down first, and then you can add things on top of it. But you can't really paint with watercolors on top of other things that are painted. It needs a porous surface to be able to absorb the dyes. Otherwise, it'll it can just be rubbed off. So. That's, I think, almost the most important thing to consider when you're gonna, if you want to try to work multimedia, or not multimedia, that isn't a school three presentation, mixed media. Oops. Sorry. Screwing up my vocabulary. Kind of just have to, because that's very stiff. It's an old photograph, photo paper that's thicker. So it kind of just needs a second for the glue to set so it doesn't like pull up on the corners. Oh my gosh, you guys can't even, oh, there goes the camera, sorry. There goes everything. <laughs> I told you that it's very precarious in here today. Oh my God. Yeah, I'm gonna lower everything. As long as my camera doesn't go out when I'm Screwing around, this is never be in charge of anything. Okay. Right? What did I do that made that happen? Oh, I was trying to move my picture. So you could see the little corner, but no, eh, you can see it well enough. Too many things I try to fit into a tiny space. That's <laughs> still good. Or maybe put that in the corner, kinda. Just, it'll be some texture other things can go on top of and then this is like super thin on the complete flip side really really thin um sorry I screwed this up there um magazine paper so I don't have to worry about the corners and things coming up but oh, I need more glue but I do kind of have to worry about it being so thin and then exposing it to something that's kind of wet, moisture with the glue. It'll want to ripple. So just have to kind of work it down and not use too much, but enough to hold it down. And it's also from a very old magazine from the 50s, so it can be delicate and want to break. This one's not too bad. Not as bad as some of them. But not too much adhesive. Want it to hold it, but not make it ripple. So, here we go. Kind of work your way out like a squeegee. And a thin layer on top to kind of lock it down. All right some stripes um I yeah, just I quick grabbed a few things I don't know for sure I might just wait until I figure out what I'm what else I'm doing to, to place everything else maybe clean the glue out of my brush a bit before I let it dry okay well, we got a few things down for collage start, but it's uh, not fully fleshing that out just yet. 
Let me grab a um towel here right behind me. Because I'm also going to clean the glue out of my little bowl here because if it dries it's just more difficult to do. I have to tell you, this thing was like a buck at the art supply store and I bought it on kind of a whim because I'm like it's just this nice little tactile thing that was where all the pallets and stuff were. And it was a buck, so, you know, your better senses fall away when something seems to be like a really good deal. So, <laughs> luckily, it's actually been something that I've been getting quite a bit of use out of. I've, uh, I've liked using it. I've enjoyed it. Oh, I just stuck my thumb in the glue. It's okay. Okay. How are we doing up here? This is still very wet. Mmm, getting there. Okay. I think I can start working on the hair, though. I got some acrylics. And I gave this a lot of thought. To acrylic or not to acrylic the hair. To let that, to do it in just watercolor or to go in with acrylic paints, which will have a very different look. But because I'm going to do this whole area in anything but watercolor, I kind of like the idea of that being an integrating factor instead of this area being completely separate um there's going to be some breaking of the barrier there by doing that that's my logic anyway okay let's grab some paint what color i uh, obviously the my or as you can imagine most likely my photo reference it's just natural like brown hair so I don't want to do that. I kind of laid down some blues there and I think I'm gonna stick with that. Oh my god. I have a little bit of everything but it's been nuts. Um some paints I need. Palette. Oh. It was all the way on the other side of the studio. Do you see how far away that was? <laughs> Terrible. Anyway. Okay. So I can actually set this like here. It actually kind of works. I don't think I did a good job at getting a right angle, but whatever it's fine not worried about it i have this was not the one i meant to grab oh it's over here okay got some pains gray and i'm just i'm we're gonna go for it it's gonna be nuts let's do it Often when I work on portraits and things, I use limited palettes. At least for just the portrait part of it, because my work is insane. But in this case for the hair, I'm not worried about that. Because it can be its own thing entirely, and I don't need it to be too flat or anything like that. We can kind of go crazy. So Payne's gray, that's like my blackish color. It's almost black. It's a dark, dark gray with some blue in it. I have a violent, uh, kind of a violet color, brilliant purple, and I have dioxazine purple, which is sort of an almost black purple too, which I sometimes use in place of blacks. This is actually just a tone of this, so... Yeah, I'll just use this one. If you are a person who likes order and reasoning behind the decisions that you are observing being made, it may not be the place for you. <laughs> it's just... It's all chaos at this point. 
Not really. I mean, yes and no. It's like partial chaos. It's controlled chaos. Some things I, I have very specific ideas how I'm handling and I'm very concerned about. And other things, it's just like, ooh, let's see what happens. There is maybe some logic. Oh yeah, I have tea. <laughs> oh, this was kind of a cool thing. Random little recent story to tell. I have this sticker on my mug. If you can see it, it's, oh, color, the light's very bright there, but it says Masterpiece in Progress. And it's a brain as a paint palette with brushes. And I made it into an art print. And somebody ordered like a big version of the print on my Etsy shop and it went to Turkey. Um, so that was kind of exciting. I haven't had too many orders go overseas. And that I think is the furthest away one so far yet. So that was kind of, it's neat. It's neat to see where things go. Kind of exciting. And a little green because why not? Do I want any yellows? I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay. What kind of brush do I want? Like a decent sized round brush. Because I'm gonna want some texture going on. Let me pull this down so we can see. We can see. I'm doing. I need to be careful. Look, the cat hairs. How? Where do they come from? Always. <laughs> anyway. Okay. Oh. So, I'm not adding any mediums to this because I think I'm going to. I don't think this is going to take, like, this is not something that I need to spend hours working on and uh, getting everything just so. So we're just going to kind of get some colors, get some things mixed up a little bit on here. This is just a really, really old paper canvas that I have. Not canvas, palette. You know, y'all know what I mean, right? So, um, one thing that does harken back to the way I painted the portrait is I'm using the same like black color, not black color. Okay. Anyway, here we go. No turning back now. Once you put acrylic paint down over watercolor painting, there is no going back. So. Gotta be kind of a little deliberate in that decision making, a little bit careful. And I'm kind of just starting inwards the darkest, darkest shadows. I'm trying to be a little bit careful. Make sure there's nothing on my hand. a little heavy bodied so I am gonna just kind of pull a little water in there to help help me to move it around as I need to ah <sighs> so how is everybody how's your week going it's first day of the week not much of a weekend how was your weekend let's start there how was everybody's weekend It's, didn't leave the house. It's nice and quiet here. So it's cold. I do have to leave the house tomorrow. I have an appointment, but it's okay. I will survive. Just 
dress for the weather and be fine. Also, I'm really over that cold. Like, my hands get cold, but... Otherwise, it doesn't seem to bother me much. Am I even human? I don't know. Who knows? I probably don't even need to worry that much about the very, very edges. Because most people would probably tape the edges of their paper. I work I do basically usually work to the edge if I'm doing on if I'm working on a watercolor block. But when a piece of art gets framed, there's a there's a little what do they call it like a rabbit. I don't know why it's called that. I should look it up because those things make me curious. But like you know, an eighth of an inch that overlaps over the edge to hold it in place. That and the glass and things, so... Um, very edges probably aren't terribly concerning, but... Also, I haven't followed the um, my reference photo exactly, or my shape and everything that I've used for the hair, but I just want to have the lighting be fairly accurate. In terms of where shadows are, or aren't, where highlights are. Trying to let the paint kind of naturally become some of the textures that I want to create here. So I'm kind of going about it in a little bit of an abstract way. Which works since I'm going in here with a different medium and just sort of, you know. Not being too worried about being completely consistent with my rendering.
I'll probably want to switch to a smaller brush when I get into some detail at least. As I move along through here. Now that I'm working on this, I am questioning a little bit. Um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to pull a little bit more hair down coming over her face. Starting to think about um, maybe maybe using a little bit of yellow after all, maybe in the highlights. Things are getting a little nuts, but I'm just sort of working out. This is just sort of working out values right now, and I'll go back in. And make corrections to tones and things. After the fact.
Definitely get a little chaotic, which is fine. I need more paint. <laughs> In it. How about that? I really enjoy when you're working on something and you kind of get into that state of calm that can come from kind of like getting into a zone of creative work. It can be very soothing and calming and you just kind of lose time. I guess they call that a flow state, right? I think the main thing, outside of getting the basic shapes that I'm looking for, is to try to make sure that I'm completely covering the weights of the pa the weight of the paper. Any weight that you're seeing along here, that's actually the adhesive that holds the paper into the block. 
and in some areas when things get really crazy and wet um, that can actually start to kind of give on you so over time you might see me the more I work on this um, you'll see me start having like clips around the edges to keep the page basically down more or less No, I never used to make the green. It ain't over yet. Yeah, we're getting there, I think. so dark maybe I want it to be just so that the colors I have for the shadows and such in the skin tones don't seem
I think this is pretty close to about where I'd want it to be and then I can decide if I want to add any more detail or textures and see how I want to handle it or the rest of that sort of thing. But I'm really happy with like this swirly area right here. So I might just go back in and add more of this tone maybe. But again, even when working with the acrylic instead of the watercolor, even though it's not like water is absorbing into my paper directly, this is still wet um, and it makes the paper buckle. So that will need to be allowed to dry bit also before I end up overworking things which I'm supposed to be being careful about okay that's <laughs> no overworking the paper oh. hey look at that oh I didn't use any green paint Am I gonna regret it if I put a little green in her ear? Is that gonna be just the worst thing ever? Hmm. So much temptation. Uh, yeah, let's do a little, just a wee bit. Let's screw it. Let's be crazy. Am I about to break everything? Probably. Okay, here. Um, where and what? Mm. You know, nothing blew up. <laughs> Robel Arts, thanks for the follow. Hello. We bit of magic more like, oh, <laughs> I appreciate that. It's mostly chaos, but I'm okay with calling it magic. <laughs> it's just, let's try some things and see what happens. And if it doesn't work, who cares? Ah, come on, paint. Get on my paper. How are you today? Tonight? Depending on where you are in the world, I suppose. I... Okay. I like a little bit. I don't want to 
to go too crazy, but I like a little bit of the green. Where, yeah, hmm. It's odd that it's working for me. Those moments where you grab a brush and put paint on it and you don't even know what you're doing until you just put it on there and see what happens. Okay. Just maybe a little bit more over here and... So terribly tempted to just really go in there and just break everything. All right, hold it together, Lino. It ain't over yet. Eh, that might be too much. See, I'm just, I probably consume more acrylic paint on accident than any reasonable human ever should, because I can barely control myself, apparently. <laughs> it's all good. I mean, take a look at it tomorrow and see. It's basically where we're at. Yeah. We'll see what it looks like, what I feel like tomorrow. Because at least with this, if I completely wrecked everything by doing that, like that acrylic paint, that's easy enough to cover up and paint over. So whatever. Still have some on here, so maybe just start filling in some of. As long as I have my nice flat edge brush, this paint's getting tacky. That's the downside with the coat, but I didn't add any medium. There are mediums I can add to help make it flow a little bit better. What? Just a little bit of water will do the trick for now. Nice flat edge on this brush. So I can get in some. Kind of make that clean as long as I don't go crazy and act like a crazy person and destroy everything, which I do. Darn it. It's fine. It's all fine. It's all. And it's always interesting how, as you work and you add more of something to even just one particular spot, how it affects everything around it. That's something that is kind of 
fun to see happen as you work and sometimes things that weren't quite right all of a sudden pull together and sometimes you realize you need to make some corrections it goes either way of course but it is interesting And this will almost, almost guarantee will not stay this color. <laughs> but it doesn't hurt to like get some, for me, the, I'm kind of approaching this at this moment, like getting a base layer down on here, um, something to work off of. And we'll probably see some of it, but it's not going to be just a solid green mass in the end. That large of a quantity. I don't love this green straight out of the tube at all. But... Green is one of the colors that I use probably the least in my paintings. It's interesting. I mean, I use it and I often usually just mix it. Rarely ever right out of a tube. Rarely ever do I just like grab a tube of green color. Usually I don't like the greens that you can just purchase. They tend to seem a little garish to me, but... I will need to clean up this edge for sure, because I kind of drew it in very... my guideline. Very roughly, anyway, so... Yeah, I don't need... A little cleaning up, and that's fine. Okay. I'm also doing a thing that I really shouldn't do and I know better than, and that is um, using up a paint just because it's on my palette and I don't want to waste it. That is not the right way to make decisions about what I'm doing. And I know this. I've learned this lesson the hard way many times, but it's fine. And that's why I'm just like, in my head, it's like, it doesn't matter. Whatever I put down here can just be worked over. So it's fine, it doesn't matter. And that is true, but also, why do I do it to myself? It probably doesn't look very straight now either because of a little bit of um, buckling that's happening with this paper right now. So that's going to make it look like this is not straight at all. I mean, kind of, kind of, a little. <sighs> Something to work on. Um, yeah. Yeah, to that. Okay, away with you. Another thing I was talking a little earlier about when you're working with, um, mixing up the camera, um, when you're working with mixing uh, mediums being aware of the order in which things go. Another one that would need that needs to go first early on when you're working on paper uh, is pencil. If you're doing anything with pencil, 
Pencil's not gonna go well over acrylic paint, nor over the adhesive that I put on um, my collage stuff, my beginning of collage stuff. So I want to think for a moment about if I would like to do anything. Scott G. Artist, hello, hello, how are you today? Uh, good evening. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Making a mess, mostly. But I'm, yeah, I kind of am taking it from being, today is all about taking it from just being a watercolor to adding all the chaos, making it the mixed media. So we're just getting started. There's going to be a lot to go on this piece, but uh, the hair is an acrylic. And I'm thinking about utilizing some colored pencil in here. This is a set that I, I have a few sets. This is the one I tend to reach for the most because it just has a good variety of, a decent variety of colors. All things said and done, it's got three little trays. You know what it doesn't have? A good pink. Or really much in the way of like a good, it doesn't have a good cool purple. It just has a very light violet and then these very like warm, warm purples. So lots of, lots of greens. I think more greens than anything else and browns. So it'd probably be great if I was using them for portraits. It's working wonderfully out. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> it always, okay. Let me think. I think I would like to add, I keep putting this in the it's tacky. Whatever. This messy process. I just don't want to really screw up the water parts of the watercolor. Ooh, look at that. I put some pearlescent paint here. It's kind of like sparkly, shiny. That's neat. Anyway. And also a really warm brown. I guess this is kind of like that. That's the thing. Like, you have... This is a decent amount of colors for somebody who doesn't like specifically work with uh, colored pencil. Like I just here and there a little bits of things, but it's never the particular color I want, which is silly and ridiculous, but. That's a little. Yeah, that's fine. It's not great. Um, and I could just, you know, go in here and add the details with watercolor. I probably should, but what I usually do when I break out any of my colored pencils is just to add some uh, unusual line work or just an unusual color thing. Life short, utilize all the tools. Yes, <laughs> when it comes to art, absolutely. Do all the things, break all the rules. <laughs> I'm a fan of that thinking. <laughs> Gotta have some fun. And I like to keep myself a little bit guessing what I'm doing. <laughs> If that makes sense. Um, if I do something in the same way too many times, almost guaranteed I'm going to get bored with it. So I would rather avoid that happening by just being willing to, I guess, constantly push and try and pull and see what I can get away with, I guess. That's a good way to put it. And that keeps things fresh and interesting. Just 
should, I could, uh, hmm, to do eyebrows and those kinds of details with this or just go back in with a watercolor. Hmm. Decisions, decisions. That's the best part keeps us reaching. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I get, I think the fact that I get bored very easily helps me to continue to grow. It works to my benefit <laughs> sometimes, at least. In that sense, it does. It can certainly be very frustrating sometimes, too. That's, I have ADHD and it's a, it can be a challenge and it has benefits, I guess. Try to look at it that way sometimes, but the net, I don't know if the net gain is really a positive or negative, but I think I am going to just, for finishing some details in the eyes, I do real dry there. So I am going to just go back in with the watercolors, I think. I like to do that. Okay, that's still wet from before. Try to be careful. Um, I centered pretty well, more or less. I think we're okay. Okay. Where's my favorite brush? There it is. In a pile. I do also have a liner brush. What is that? Which bin did I put it in? Oh, there it is. I've been using I've been uh, using this one, and it's a liner brush because the uh, the the bristles are a little bit longer, and you can get a very fine point when it's wet. And I was using it. Where is oh here. I was working on this and the another piece and using that to do some uh, hair. It works real nice to work to do some details in the hair work. Um, little flyaways and some things that you can kind of suggest a bit. So I've been playing around with using that brush. And it kind of makes me crazy too because I don't generally like to get tied up in the really fussy details of things but i can find myself there so i try to find a, a balance of um getting really into the details and then also letting go and just letting the paint do its thing oh thank you thank you very much scott i appreciate that that means a lot <laughs> thank you um not currently exhibiting anywhere um I do intend to approach some galleries this year. We'll see what happens. I'm not, um, I have a list of some places to approach, but I just need to kind of buckle down and do it and see what happens. But it's always a, a little stressful, but I'll get it done. So right now it's just me and my website. <laughs> I have all my work. Uh, I have my portfolios and work for sale, primarily just myself, representing myself at the moment. <laughs> mm, no, I'm going to the liner. Go into the liner brush. I do have some really tiny ones too, but. I mean, I can go crazy with something like that, but I haven't used my liner brush with watercolor left yet, so let's see how that feels, how that looks. Ooh. Yeah, get some really fine little bits there. That's nice. I like that. Yeah, it's a... I've always had a little, um... 
Okay, I think that the gallery scene has changed a bit. Um, I think I tend to be hesitant to to trust it anymore. Is part of my thing, my hang up as well as like the the kind of the confidence to put yourself out there like that is also there's like a combination of different things at work for me there. Um, So I think so many pe people maybe even still have the picture in their head of like a gallery will represent you and then you never have to worry about selling anything. They'll bring in the money and the clients and customers and you're all be set. Um, I just don't know that it is that way anymore. I don't know. I don't know the best way to go yet. It's just... It's always a lot of figuring things out as you go, right? <laughs> With social media platforms, self-promotion is great. Yeah, that is... That's the thing. If you can get... If you're good at social media and you're good at self-promotion, then I think you can get by. It's just a very... It's a different world, I think. I actually majored in illustration when I was in college. And even then how different uh, things are. It was uh, print business cards, print a postcard, and have portfolios that you can try to make appointments to walk in a door with or mail your portfolio to somebody with paid pat postage back, so hopefully you get it back. And that's what they would recommend for trying to find work. Go to the bookstore, go through the magazine aisles, find who the publishers are that are hiring uh, people to do that work and like it wasn't about emails or websites or there was no social media when I graduated art school which is probably ages me a bit but that's you know whatever <laughs> and it's so dependent on what the artist wants to achieve that as well yes absolutely and certainly what I have been interested in has changed so much from when I was in college I used to think I wanted to do like fantasy illustration work when I was much younger and hmm. that is not where I want to be anymore. That is not where my interest lies, lies anymore, clearly. Uh, I don't think there's that I, yeah, it just isn't the thing. I've changed a little bit as we do. Change your interests and change your visual language. All that kind of stuff. Man, I love this brush. I don't remember how much I paid for it. It wasn't a ton. It wasn't, I think it was under 10 bucks. Good investment though. It just feels really nice to use. need to go back and make adjustments in terms of like making a line thicker, spreading it out a little bit, I can do that as I move along, but so far I think it's mostly okay. Yeah, gar growth, exactly. When I was in art school, I, I distinctly remember, uh, I think it was senior year, and one of the instructors 
said in a not entirely joking like it was a he said it like a joke but he wasn't joking entirely and it was the best way to make it as an artist or illustrator is to get married to somebody with a good income with a solid income it's like that's really that's what you're gonna tell us hmm that was uh you know that's a little disheartening to hear <laughs> that stage of the game as you're about to try to get out on your own and make something of anything. Not every... Sorry, I think I'm kind of covering up what I'm doing with my hand. I don't know. Need to. Kind of because of the placement of the camera, I guess. Just turn it a little bit here. So it shows up a little better. Now that I'm adding some of these line, this line work in here, and I added the hair, I could see that I think I need to adjust the shadow here, probably. And this almost reads as a little too warm to me at the moment, so we'll see. Terrible advice sounds like the words of someone without a dream. Yeah, isn't it? It's really... It felt like such an awful thing to say to, um, to a class of, you know, kids that are trying to, gonna make a go at it. Felt so cynical. Like, we'll all get cynical on our own eventually. It can at least give us the chance to get there. <laughs> Let us do it ourselves. <laughs> a little bit into the eyebrows here. It's almost disappointing that like her I didn't really have her ears visible to do because I love painting ears. They're so weird. Good luck Danny. Hiya, hello. <laughs> Thank you for joining. How are you tonight? Hope you hope everybody is staying warm wherever they are because it is at least where I am. Quite cold. <laughs> Good days to stay indoors if you can. Good days to work in the studio. Doing okay-ish. What's better than alternatives? <laughs> I'm doing well. Been working on this lady for a couple hours tonight kind of just adding some little details it's i'm getting into the both fun and scary part of taking something from being just a portrait to a mixed media piece and uh it's both the best part and the most terrifying part but got a decent little go of it. A lot of the things that are going to kind of create the context of the piece will come yet when I work on this area. And this this green is not working for me right here, but it's fine for now. That'll get changed. Get it there. Get it to where it needs to go.
This lady has wonderful eyebrows. I am slightly jealous. going back and forth here a little bit drawing in some lines and then picking up some of the color to kind of like get it where I'm gonna be happy with it and when you see me looking over here I both have my reference photo as well as my um, my OBS my streaming software over here so I can see my uh, photo that I'm working off of, as well as seeing like what the camera sees on the screen. So it's like this big, and that gives me the like as if I could stand across the room to see this, to see how things are working or not. That helps me better because I'm kind of at a funny angle to this. I'm sitting, and then this is in front of me here. So I don't always see things exactly how it would if it were sitting up in front of me. Um, so I'm looking both at that to see how, how it's working as I'm working into it, as well as checking my reference. So it's a weird little kind of back and forth thing. But it's kind of nice to have that option to see it that way. It gives you a good, uh, distance, I guess. Which can be helpful. When you're looking, it's like when you look at something too close. And after a while, you kind of no longer see the big picture. It's a way to like kind of step back and see the big picture. That's a little messy. Definitely getting to a point that it's kind of uh, a little bit of a battle to control the saturation levels of things. Because um, the more you paint onto watercolor paper, and the more color that you layer on and you keep building and building, eventually you can kind of start to, um, as you're painting, you're picking up almost color also as you're trying to lay it down. So you have to be a little careful about that to try to prevent it from moving in a way that you don't want it to too much. So I'm reaching that point where the paper is probably about... It's getting close to about holding as much color from the watercolor as it will be able to. So, balancing act. And some of it might be that I need to do just one good wash over it to kind of smooth it out once everything's properly dry. 
Ah, oh, have a great, gotta go. Oh yeah. <laughs> Scott, thanks for joining me. Thanks for chatting. And I hope you have a great night. Good luck with all your work as well. And... Okay. This is what I came here to do originally when I was working on the eyebrows and got distracted. Back to looking at the actual eyebrows again. How much detail do I want to get into? Mm. I might be getting pretty close to... This one might be pretty close to being done. Let me just... That's better. This little area right here, this tiny little piece of purple. That's actually the hair. It's throwing me off a little bit. And I think it's, I think. Yeah, I think that works. I might want to get a little bit of the darker color up in here too, the shadow being cast by the hair, but I probably should chill out about doing that <laughs> tonight and um, let the paper recover a little bit from all the chaos and moisture I'm throwing at it. But for now, look at this eyebrow kind of back in here. I do love this liner brush. And it's funny because I I can get bored with things so easy and that can be like problematic for me. But doing these little lines very like slowly and methodically is weirdly soothing <laughs> and calming and just, oh, I could do this for a while. Just get lost in making itty bitty little lines. It's weird what what things work for you or with you and what sh things don't so much. Who knows? Pull my eyebrow down a little further. Let's 
tricky to measure against when she's at an angle. And just a little bit more. Does it look like weird and pretentious when artists do the thing? You know? <laughs> like then they're measuring. I know it's gotta look really weird, but it actually works. This is creating a weird line because there's a little highlight in the hair right there that makes that look like it's going too far or something weird. So that's a little shadow in here to kind of separate that out a bit. Remember when I said I wasn't going to worry about this? shadow here tonight. <laughs> so much for that. I may have missed it earlier when I was telling everybody how I was my own worst enemy because yes, it is the truth. That needs to be kind of the darkest area right in here. Since that was already wet, that'll soften and bleed out a bit, and I don't have to worry about it. Um, my ear needs a little bit more. Than it. I can find myself getting too fussy. 
And I'm on the verge of it. I can tell when it's happening. I'm not always good at stopping myself. Part of an edge. I'm doing the thing. I always do. Where after I think I'm done with something, I just find more reasons to fuss around with it. Rosalie, hello, hello. <laughs> um, that was so pretty, thank you. What brand of paper am I using? I am using an Arches watercolor block. It is, uh, I think, oh, I just pulled the whole thing off the back of it. It's fine, it's fine, here. It is, here we go. Um, 300 pound, oh, 300 gram, 140 pound. Um, she 20 sheets, 14 by 20, which is kind of an odd size, but that's the biggest sheets I have on a block. So that's what I'm using. Um, I like arches. I also, uh, use Fabriano, which is a very good brand also that is not quite as expensive as the arches, but that's a good one. And your favorites? Oh, nice. So do you use, uh, do you watercolor paint also? I take it. <laughs> I love it. It's uh, It's been such an interesting thing to really get into over the last couple of years of my life. It's fun. It's fun and it's challenging and it is such an almost opposite way to work. That make, keeps things very interesting. And I'm running out of room in my paint palette to keep adding weird random colors that I find. And that makes me sad. <laughs> I'm gonna need another uh, palette just to like keep adding random colors on here and having fun with it. And it's uh it just it's so different because I always used to paint with acrylic paints and it's like you have to completely re rethink how you work I love watercolor but I can do any media like charcoal and graphite pencil color nice I like to, I like to experiment a lot I like to combine things of course here I am with watercolor and acrylic and everything on here Archis is good in watercolor yeah I they're a very good paper I think they can be pretty well trusted to get a solid product out of. Um, yeah, and I wouldn't, one of these days I want to get some of their uh, 300 pound paper. I've only ever used their 140 pound and it's, uh, it's nice, but I tend to be very abusive to it. 
so I still get some buckling. What is coming along here? Let me see. Try to make sure it's all fitting in the camera screen. I think at some point I'd gone in with the intention of adding some color in the irises, and then I got very distracted by anything and everything, as I do. So let's, let's do that thing. Probably go back in and pull in a highlight with something either acrylic or something else because this is. I still have some of it, but I'd like to have a little bit more going on there. That's okay, but it looks a little flat still. I need to lose some of that on this side too. So that's gonna change things a little bit, how they look. Is that eye getting, that eye was getting oblong? What's going on here? Can <laughs> uh, worried there for a second. It's just the way the highlight is on it, I think, is throwing me off. I mean, the highlights are not. You know what? We're just gonna. I just need some place to start over with that. Okay. That's better. Right. And now that that made everything look a little flatter on this side, Part of it is also the, the buckling of the paper. It's really throwing me off. Every time I look at my screen, I feel like this eye, um, the circle of it, the iris is wonky. I think it's just, I think it's mostly a trick of the camera combined with some of the paper starting to buckle under the moisture or continuing to buckle under the moisture. But it's weird effects that make me think I'm going somewhere wrong in the wrong direction. Garrison, hello! <laughs> How are you? Still going a little bit. I'm... Yeah. <laughs> you noticed. Yeah. Um... And I'm not done with it. 
I decided I decided I wanted to change the color because I the blue lasts forever. That's a beautiful thing about putting blue in your hair. It stays like forever. But I my roots were that long because I've been lazy and I wanted to change the color. So I did the bleach, which over the blue made it kind of this cool uh blonde color, and then my roots were like Bart Simpson yellow. Uh, I will share your live stream, my friend. Oh, thank you, Rosalie. I appreciate it. Thank you for checking me, checking out and hanging out for a little bit. Um, yeah, the, the roots were all like Bart Simpson yellow, which is a terrible color. So I then did a toner on the roots. So they're not, it's not as bad, but I have it covered up because I think it still looks kind of bad. But I still have to put some color over it. And I just ran out of the patience to take another do another thing and do another shower and all that. It's just like, you know what? Maybe tomorrow. <laughs> oh my God, Bart yeah, Simpson yellow. I know that. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> I got deep red in my brown hair. I need so much toner. Yes. There's never enough toner. Oh my God. Buckets and buckets of toner every time I lighten. It's crazy. And what am I doing here? Um, yeah. I was going to add a highlight. That's what I was going to do. Let's do it. Got my white paint here. And it's going against all of the rules, too. But I am following no rules. No rules. There are no rules. Alright. I need a very small brush. That'll do. I think that's small enough. <laughs> I see you've been getting more combos and drop-ins for your channel. Oh, yeah, things a little bit. It's all slow, but I'm happy for anybody who wants to hang out for a little bit while I, while I make messes. <laughs> so many messes to be made. How are things going for you with your streams? I'll wake up and it'll be like at 3, 3.30 in the morning. Your set was live. Because our, obviously our times are very different. <laughs> so I hope they're going well for you too. All right, it's that moment of concentration. It's like watching wild animals. Don't spook them. Don't spook me when I'm painting tiny things. <laughs> How are you feeling about this piece? Looks beautiful. The tones of her skin are so luscious. Oh, thank you. I'm feeling pretty good about it. This whole area here is still a relatively large question mark, <laughs> both in my mind and uh, um, on the paper. Like I have ideas, I have concepts in mind, I have um, the theme in mind. Um, uh, now you know how I feel when you're on at 3 a.m., right? <laughs> I totally get it. Um, yeah, that's the right main thing. Like, I'm I'm happy with how she's turned out, and I'm actually pretty happy with where the hair is at the moment, at least. But it's getting all the other things is uh, going to be like nerve wracking to decide how to handle it, and then actually going in there and doing it and being happy with it in the end. It's all still such a mess, and we'll see where it goes. Doing good. Got your stream set up, but proper now. Oh, nice. Got a new mic. I have a streaming area. The best of all, I feel like my art is getting better. Heck yeah. Look at all these wins. <laughs> That's awesome. I, you would laugh to see my setup as it is at the moment. Use gesso. Nice, nice. Look at you getting all fancy. <laughs> I have my LED arches. But what I used to connect them to each other in the center didn't hold well. So they're just separated. And without that piece to hold them in the center, they're kind of just, they're actually leaning against the, my camera's lens um, at the moment. And my camera, the H HDMI out for streaming, has decided that the port is going bad. So, if it's in just so, it'll work. But if 
anything nudges the wire, even a little bit, I could lose my my feed. It happened at the end of my last stream. Like I completely lost my HDMI out. I couldn't figure out how to get back in, so we just called it an end. Yeah, when the equipment is just like, nope, we're not doing it. And that's it. It's the port on the camera is going bad, and apparently it's a thing that happens when you are when you use it a lot because they're just not apparently made to handle being plugged in, unplugged a lot. They're just they are prone to failure and we are getting there so I gotta figure out try to baby it along a little bit before I have to drop any money on either getting it repaired or hopefully not replaced but if I share something with you that happened today has to do with streaming stuff yeah absolutely do tell do tell I like a story <laughs> in the meantime the tea I keep forgetting to drink it's still like this full it's not even that hot anymore and I have it in a nice little thing Actually, it's just barely south of being the perfect temp, so, you know, it's still good. This is delicious drama? <laughs> All right. Let's hear it. I'm game for some delicious drama. I went over today to help my dad because he wants to sell a whole lot of stuff on the Facebook marketplace, right? Okay, I'm with you. God, I haven't been on Facebook in so long. It's such a scary place anymore, I think. Feels like it. Hey. I tend to avoid anymore. I think something else I might do with my colored pencils here, as long as they're an arm length away from me. So we're going through his garage and he pulls out a huge plastic box container. My eyes go full wide and I cannot believe it. What was it? <laughs> Wasn't a ventriloquist doll, was it? <laughs> ah, the suspense. Do tell, do tell. Garage things can be very exciting. Eight years ago, my ex-husband left me for another woman. Oh my god, I'm sorry. Ugh. It's very sudden. But at the time he was a pro photographer while I was doing book design. Oh, I think I know where this is going. Idiot had effed off and left all his best lighting and tripods. Oh, <laughs> score. Hey, he was good for something in the end. <laughs> oh, man. Nice, though. That's awesome. Hey, you never know where something good can come. Um... Who knows what, right? <laughs> I love it. So now you got some uh, upgraded equipment. That's that's excellent. That helps. Oh, uh oh, here comes my cat. Ah, what is? And I totally forgot. Uh, oh. I'd given them to my dad. It was such a pleasure getting that score and remembering how he fucked himself over, not only in marriage, but left behind his expensive stuff. Pro lighting, bulbs all sorts. Gotta test some. Thanks for letting me share. That's so, that's so awesome. Score. So yeah, stream's going well. The setup's good. The art's doing good. I love to hear it. <laughs> awesome. That is awesome. Ah. Hey, when the good things, when the good things do come, take it and run. Art passion for pencils. Hello, hello. Oh, did you see my cat? He's, he's uh, this is his supper time. He's used to getting fed now, so he's, uh, he's like, okay, you're done now, right? <laughs> Here, come say hi. I think things are pretty dry. It's probably okay. This is what I deal with all the time. My cat trying to walk across my art. Come here. Oh, come here, little monster. He's my not too little guy. He's very sweet. He's a uh, like 15 pound Abyssinian Watson. <laughs> Mm 
Oh, look at you. You're being so nice. He's been napping this whole time. I moved uh, an old cat tree of his that he barely fits in in the window in here. So he officially has a spot where he can hang out and he's been thrilled about it ever since I put it there. Oh, she's a good artist too. Oh, awesome. Art passion for pencils. I would love to check out your stuff. He is a character. I love this little butt. He is a character. He is a, a characteristic of uh, Abyssinian breed is they're very um, social, needy, a little anxious, goofy. Actually, a lot of the descriptions say cheeky, which I love and I think it's very accurate. <laughs> You're very cute, yes you are. Um, but he doesn't ever go off on his own and sleep. He always needs to be... Um, he always needs to be where the action is. <laughs> he always has to be nearby. He doesn't like it when people are in separate rooms. Okay, if you're gonna walk over my keyboard, let me move that out of the way. Wait, oh my god. Or he stops the stream somehow. Oh no, my nose. It's cat hair. It's all cat hair. <laughs> Love the picture. Thank you. Thank you. It's coming along. I'm. I'm. I'm happy. And so the big, the big question going forward, cat hair off, will be dealing with this area. I need to really figure out. I need, yes, I need a cat cam. Problem is he never stays put in one place most of the time. Although now that I have that cat tree, and it's hilarious because the top of it is this thing that's about, it's a circle. It's maybe like 16 inches uh, in diameter. And he, he will curl up to sleep in it, but he barely fits in it. Like when he's curled up to sleep, like his butt is kind of up and out or his head has to hang over to fit. So it's really, uh, it's kind of adorable and hilarious. So we definitely need, 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 okay. Although in my one camera, my main camera is kind of on the fritz. It's uh, uh hard to spare another one. <laughs> yeah, they're great, aren't they? I love having a studio cat. They're very sweet. Yeah, that good boy. Yes, he is. And he's still a little bit sleepy, so he's being very sweet, but I, I know, I know what he's gonna need and want here. <laughs> I just actually got, I did actually get a really nice tripod um, for Christmas. It's uh, one that I've been thinking about picking up, so I'm really thrilled with that. Oh, look, I'm completely tearing this off of the block. Um, <laughs> so many tripods. You will probably find that you need them because you can use them for so many things besides even just a camera. You can use the tripods to uh, mount microphones and lighting and all the things. So you'll very likely find that you will have uses for them. Uh, sometimes I even have two just set up one where it's like my overhead shot and another one that's like a standard upright. So Oh my goodness, you're such a ham. Yeah. But I think... I'm trying to think what else I... There's more that I can work on on here tonight yet without going into the... getting into the weeds and figuring this out. Just the cat, his, his hair, it's always the nose. Ah, okay. Sorry. Sorry. It's all good. Oh. Yes, you're very cute. <laughs> I'm sure I've got the tripods he used to set up the studio backdrop so I could try a green screen. Oh, nice. Nice. That would be a great thing to have, too, because even besides a green screen, you can just hang different fabrics. The hair is so soft, the touches of green on the purple. Oh, good. I'm glad you like that. <laughs> that was just sort of like, hey, we're just doing it. This, I, this has got to go. This green is not working for me here, but... It's fine for the moment as a, just, a placeholder. Um, but like I said, I got to figure all this out. Yeah, oh no, he's okay, coming behind me. Hi, mister. He, he can be a real ham when 
I'm streaming, it's funny, because he's not, I mean, he's very sweet often, but this is particularly so. So, let me think. I don't know exactly what I'm doing with all the background. I'm not just going to leave it this little pink wash. Something else is happening there, too. There's going to be a lot more, like, I'm going to probably paint probably an acrylic something in particular here that might be sort of layered over. Oh, the, the feedback for how much is shown in the stream. Yeah, I mean, that's, and it's just like the way that I would possibly look at it. There's a lot of different ways to consider it. Just, you know, other other elements to consider to maybe help help you, help guide you in the end, maybe. So yeah, happy to. Anytime anybody has any questions about art things or whatever, um, I'll let you know if I don't know, or I'll let you know if I have an idea about things. I'm happy. I'm happy to try to help anytime. Okay. Now that I'm properly itchy from cat hair being all over my face <laughs> and my painting. I think I'm probably going to call it here, guys. And I really, oh my gosh, thank you all so much for hanging out with me while I paint. I love it. It's been, uh, yes, I'm using OBS. Um, I'm actually dual streaming too. I'm streaming on Twitch and and YouTube, and you can do that with their free OBS with just this, uh, with a particular plugin allows you to do it. Works pretty well. So yeah, I'm just using the very basic setup and I've tried I messed around a little bit with that uh, the free version of the stream something I don't know I can't remember now but it's just like somebody it's since uh, OBS is uh, open source somebody just kind of added stuff onto it and is charging for it so you know what I'm good with a free one for now it's working fine I haven't decided if I need to add in, like, people do all the overlays and things, and I just haven't done much of that. You can use acrylic paint with watercolor. Oh yeah, they, yeah, absolutely. I'm all about doing that. The hair is actually all acrylic. Um, the hair is acrylic paint, the face and the hand are watercolor so far. Like, it's all about going crazy from this point on. But yeah, I'm going to pick this up. I am going to have to do some serious decision making between tonight and Thursday morning stream so that I can start moving forward with this area. And then once I know what's happening here, I have a better, clearer idea of that than anything else that I would ultimately consider changing in the area where she is will start to become clearer, I think. So like right now, I could just leave this as is and feel done with it. The pink is too flat, but other than that, um, this will, working on this will help me uh, see what else I would want to change or do. So yeah, that's where we are. I'm going to have to clean cat hair out of my watercolor palette again. No big deal. <laughs> but it's all good. I right, thank you guys so much for hanging out, and I hope I will see you on another stream. I stream again on Thursday morning. Um, it's 10 a.m. Central Time, and I hope everybody is staying warm if you're in the deep freeze like I am, and have a great creative week in the meantime. So, good night, everybody. <laughs>